Yes, welcome back to Footy and Friends. It's where we talk about footy with our friends. Oh. And uh, my, <laughs> this week on, we have a special guest. I'll get to him in shortly. But firstly, Brettles, how are you, my friend? Uh, DB, good to be back for another special ep. How'd you go with the AFL 9s this week? Yeah, we won, mate. Jeez, it was hot last night, oh. too. Poof. But you'd, um, I'd, you'd love it with a bit of oh, sweat I did, dripping I played forward. You know who we had down? One of your old teammates. Who? Big Shawnee Hampson. Oh, big hammer. Yeah. Oh. One of the best-looking roosters that we've ever seen Jeez, in the what's AFL. what's your team called? The bloody handsome AFL 9s or something, oh, is it? don't. You make me blush. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Maybe I should come play. Uh, yeah, well, I'll bring it back to a seven, I suppose, from the <laughs> nine. But... Um, no, look, I think, yeah, mate, having a big ruckman like that, six foot eight or nine, whenever he yeah. is, and have him tapping it, win every um, contest, makes yeah. it very easy as a forward, put it that way. Should call it the AFL 10 out of 10s. Well, they should, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe take that to Dills and see what he thinks. Yeah, there we go. I, I saw will. him down there, actually, yeah. playing for did the he, other team. Did he say g'day? No. Okay. Me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, very special guest on this week, yeah. uh, Trade His Own, Trade yeah. Podcast Own's back this week, News Mitchell Brazier. Cleary. How are you, my boy? Thanks for having me on, guys. I've seen the social media go gangbusters between you guys recently, oh, so I need, to, I need to force my own to, uh, way onto this show. Yeah, chemistry strong with Brettles and I. Oh, we were saying this the other day, and, and the team, might, I don't often get compliments, and, um, and Brett and I might not even agree with this, but they said that I could have unearthed one of the best media stars by accident in the last couple of years. In by, Mickey Butler. In, no, in, in, <laughs> in, in Brett Delidio. Wow. Yeah. Who, who, said, he, who said this? The whole team. They said that it's just been such... They like it when you get a bit grumpy with Do me. They? Yeah. They, oh, they yeah. reckon it's just great content. And <laughs> it, in fairness, I don't think it's... You know, you're putting that on. I think just by choice, you're a great talent on the show. Oh, thanks, man. It's good to have you here. So, mate, anyway, how are you? <laughs> great. I'm wearing the Cubby Swartz tie. I was yes. in Sydney last week. Should be the big Andrew Dillon on show. press conference. I walked up to him. I said, is that a Cubby Swartz tie? I didn't even know they made them. And then there he was. He he was like a pig was he shaft. He was so happy. <laughs> really? I said, I need to take a photo of this and send it to Dill. He's like, no, no, wait, I've got an idea. I'm, I've got like I've got this sorted. So he's, he's got his whole media strategy planned around this tie. And really? Like, what a good dude. He's actually a ripping, ripping fellow, which I'm... Um, yeah, very lucky. How was the uh, the launch up there? Good? It was great. I, I, people in Melbourne question opening round, but I think it was awesome because yeah. you pull four games out of like rounds two, four, six and put them into their own primetime slots. Yeah. If Collingwood Giants was played in round four, that would be a Saturday twilight at 4.30. No one would give two shits about it. Yeah. Yeah. But you put it on its own Saturday night, Giants Stadium. It was a cool little buzz there. 21,000 people. They got the DJs going. Yeah. There's more Giants fans, honestly, than I thought there were going to be. Yeah. And they're an exciting team to watch now. Callum Brown, Toby Green, Aaron yep. Cadman's oh. going to be a star. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I think they're building something. And, you know, people might laugh. At every second, second person I spoke to in Sydney spoke about this new tunnel from the city to uh, Parramatta. M3? You can get from Darling Harbour yep. to Giant Stadium in 16 minutes. Yeah. Oh. It used to be like, what? 40 minutes? Yeah, yeah. minimum. Yeah. So, did, they tell you what that, that, that did they tell you what it cost you as well? Yeah. Sure, <laughs> yeah. I, I think I lost money up there just travelling <laughs> on that. I used to have to take Paramount Road. <laughs> Mate, I used to zip through there on the scooter. I reckon you'd get the invoice. It cost you like 70 bucks to get to training. I think I made <laughs> yeah. about 30 that day. <laughs> like, it was crazy. It was actually crazy. So, they, I reckon this tunnel might uh, single-handedly change the club. Okay, secondly on tunnels, which I got to over there because the tunnels are fucking sick in Sydney. Mm. I'm not going to lie. But do you know over there, just a bit of a, um, I think people will love this. You know with Rego, like with e-tags here. Mm. So in Sydney, if you use enough money equivalent of what your registration would cost in your car, it actually counteracts your registration. Is that right? So like say it's a thousand bucks for Rego and you do a thousand bucks in tolls, that wipes your- Really? Yeah, in Sydney. If you're registered in Sydney versus in Melbourne, you pay Rego and tolls. Yeah. So- yeah. Is actually, I thought we were actually just working to pay off the, the toll roads. Oh, that's what I thought. John <laughs> Howard. I've, I've got a gripe John on Howard this. said that. I remember it. Well, let's he get said, into politics, all right? When is that going to stop? Oh, oh. mate. Because I travel that M1 every single day just about on all yeah. those toll roads. Yeah. And there's a lot of people on there. Do there you get is. a discount when there's a crash and it's slow? No. Nah, nah. I think under 40 Ks, if you're just yeah. cruising under there, I give the, the double bird yeah. to you know the what I cameras. do as well? You know the, the lanes when you're meant to have two in the car? Yeah. I do these ones. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah, you I'm don't a, know what's in the back. Exactly. Fuck yeah. I don't do that. Uh, anyway, <laughs> it is, as much as I'd love to talk about tolls today. Yeah, no, we're not. We've got plenty on. Hey, absent star. Yeah. Star? Mm. It's yeah. an absent star today. Now, Mitch is obviously filling that we, seat very oh, no, well. We've got Mitchie. Yeah, well, I'm not, ha I'm not oh, upset sausages, about it. Sausages Barlow. But uh, Mickey Barlow, mm. who is a- He's know, got his own car or something? No, no. Well, he, he had the Werribee Mobile, <laughs> which is getting sent in left, right and centre. Yeah. If you see the Werribee Mobile, we Jimmy Allen driving around yeah, the Werribee Mobile. Please send it. Don't. No, I, I think we stopped doing it because I think it's getting a bit weird. Okay. But keep doing it. Yeah. 
And on the weekend, he actually went to the butcher again. You wouldn't believe it. So <laughs> Mick Barlow, uh, he, he was losing the feathers and then he got on the mosh and now he's looking very good. He's thick. He's very thick. Yeah. And one of my old former teammates, if you remember Dylan Viojo Rainbow. I don't remember that name. From Western Jets. He was uh, out mixed way and, and saw him at the, um, at the hairdressers getting a chop. And old Mick, have a look at this photo. Uh, that uh, that was sent through of uh, of Mickey Mickey Milkshakes getting his hair cut. He had the two uh, earbuds Ooh. up the nose, getting the getting the wax. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> wow! So that's why he hasn't come in today. I think he's very busy, which, which he disclosed to us. Yeah, and he goes, "Don't worry, mate, I've got it." Dill yeah. <laughs> already had I it, had which is photo. perfect. <laughs> which you could tell he's not here today. He's actually sent a voice message. Oh, has he? I haven't heard this yet. Yeah. Incredible things to make a mark over there. Hey, enjoy your afternoon, enjoy the record, and uh, let's get back into it next week. Um, If you'll have me back, wonder who's filling the third seat. I'll suck. (laughs) That was worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Won't get that. That's half a minute back. <laughs> well, geez, I remember we cut Thanks, that out of the show. Thanks, Mick. That was uh, that was fantastic. Riveting, as some would say. Hey, um, launch of the tradies. Yeah. Mitch. Before we get into round zero, we'll talk about that. What's uh, What was the first episode? What did you guys cover this week? We had Logan McDonald already on our whiteboard. Oh. We uh, always like to you know put a few names up there to keep tabs on. He was already up there. The two names we added today on the first step were Bailey Smith. Ushka. Ooh. And Tim English, obviously teammates of the Western Bulldogs. So a big gone, watch. Gone. You reckon they're gone, gone? I reckon they're both gone. There you go. That's my just, oh, mate, with no research, but I just think that they're uh, at the door. Mm. There's Thoughts? a third one out of contract there, Jamara Eagle Hagen. And of those three, Same I'd course. say Jamara was the most likely to stay. And clubs are, clubs are coming hard for Jamara because along with he and Logan McDonald, there's not really many gun key forwards. Brett's man, Cam Zuha, is there, but he's more of a third, third tall, yep. mid size. Mm. Um, the Hawks have come hard for Jamara. They threw the kitchen sink at Ben King. Couldn't get that to work. Todd Marshall, they had a look at. I think they might have even had a nibble at Aaron Norton last year before mm-hmm. he signed that big deal um, to stay at the Bulldogs. So Jamara is going to be at least a million dollars a season. And wow. right now there are 60 players in the comp who are on 800 grand or more. That would be the official AFL numbers. With the CBA going up by 30%, in the next three years, there's going to be at least 60, 70 players earning a million dollars a season. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty the cool. notion of a, you know, Outside of being a top star of the comp, being on a million dollars a season, he's going to go, rise and rise. Well, there's going to be a few more people added to that star. Oh, he's yeah, always no, doing yeah, the, uh, the total player the payments. But, I uh, love the stars. Yeah. This, is, this is the thing that people need to get their head around, though, mm. uh, Masai, is that the million dollar player isn't the uh, what it used to be in terms yeah. of they were they're so much better than everyone else that you give Buddy and Fife and at their prime, you know, that's yeah. what they're getting. Now it's because the, the TPP is so high that you know, numbers have to go up. So yeah. therefore your player that was on, you know, when they were on a million, it was on 700, 750 is now on a million. Yep. It's, just, it's just the way it goes. It's, it's just crazy. inflation. The, the 30%, like, you know, it sounds, I don't know if it does sound to everyone, but you, you think of that, you go, oh, 30%. That's a lot of money when you're on like 700K already an extra oh, shit, 30%. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's massive. So that's cool. Yeah. Um, I love player movement. For anyone who hasn't listened to tradies, obviously Sam McClure, Mitch Cleary, talking all things trade throughout the season because that's the best thing about our game that I love and it, you know I was chatting to Andrew Dillon about this last week with the mid-season trade potentially coming mm. in which fuck I hope it does it will be so next exciting year, I'm here. next year or this year uh, next year 25. next year okay yeah. um, but all this stuff is happening now like mm. you know once a trade's done lifts are, uh, are finalised like they're already thinking about what they can bring in next year yep 100%. And you're dealing with that now. Yep. Big, the bull who's, you know, footy and friend's own star yep. Yep. out of contract and said, please hold Free off. What, what have you heard about this? I've heard there's clubs coming. Wow. Brett's not going to tell me who, but we're going to try and push him. Yeah. yeah. WA boy. Does so he does he start contract talks before the midway point of the season or is it a back end of the season? Um, oh, I think it's initial to see how they're going early, um, early days. I mean, from Cam's point of view, and I don't want to speak on his behalf, but for him in this point in time, is that he's won 25 games out of, he'll play his 100th round one. Mm. You know, so um, 
not a great strike rate, and he's he's a competitive bloke who wants to win, and he wants to see you know that the club's on the way up. Now he's played two practice games, and they've shown some positive signs, which is great. And I think they're going to be a damn good side uh, in time. But that's going to take time. You got to be willing to weather that storm, you know. So. Um, yeah, we'll wait and see. He's um he's a valued member there. I know that uh, at that club, and he he loves the place. But it's also, you know, you 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 don't want to hang around at a place that's just going to continually be in the bottom bottom half. And that's mm. I don't think they will be. But things take time. The start of the season is so important for these clubs, like so North important. Melbourne. If they start two and ten, Zerhar probably picks up the phone and, and starts calling Brett mid season. Look at the Hawks. They've got more money to offer than anyone right now. Yeah. They've gone hard at these other guys. If they start the year. Six and three, and show some signs. Bit of, of hype. Bit of hype. Jamara might go. Oh, geez, like there's a bit going on over there. Mm. I still think he's most likely to stay at the Bulldogs. Jamara. He's yeah. an academy guy. He said that he wants to stay. But with clubs, the start of the year is so important because it comes to that mid-season point, and they start to speak to their managers yeah. and think, "Get me out of here, or I want to. I want to move it. Look at that. Club. Well, as the money's so good now, you don't have to. You, you want to play and you want to win. Like winning's worth more than yeah. than cash, really. Because if you win flags, you make it back anyway. And that's you know, it's easy. It's hard to win flags. Sorry, so. And you, you can't predict exciting. when no. you're going to win a flag. Trust me, I know. No, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Question: We suppose in the tradies, who's going to finish their career better with, with a better resume or a better career? Max Holmes at Geelong mm-hmm. or Bailey Smith from the Western Bulldogs? That's it. Yeah. Now, are you posing this because obviously the talk around Bailey Smith going to Geelong? Yep. Yeah. And also Max Holmes is out of contract Ooh. at Geelong. So do you reckon then if Geelong were to get Bailey Smith, that would then force out Max Holmes? Or no, I think they could. They I think could they need him. Bailey Smith more than anyone because yeah. their midfield without Guthrie for the first half of this year and then yeah. Dangerfield's um, Twilight. Twilight and it, maybe yeah. goes forward to end his career. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, they're pretty skinny through there for star power. Mm-hmm. I'll answer the question first. Okay, I've got an yeah. answer. I, I think that it depends how you measure your career. Mm. Like if you're looking at consistency and impact on the game on the field, maybe Max Holmes. But if you're thinking like someone who can you can market your club around, puts bums on seats. I think we we don't forget what Bailey Smith did in those finals when he's kicking yeah. three from the boundary up at the Gabba. Like he was hands down for that five six week period the best player in form at that time. But so do we not measure him because of that? And his whole career because of like, oh, but he was that then. Has he been that throughout? No, he hasn't. But also, like, Max Holmes Max hasn't Holmes done hasn't, what he did yet. No, Max no. hasn't. No. Yeah, exactly. So, I think we're still too early on yeah. really both of those two yeah. boys. But uh, if you yeah, you can only judge on what you've seen so far. Um, yeah. And you never know what – you don't know what Bailey Smith might be in that Geelong side. Yeah, but no. it's not that Geelong side that was. It's not, so yeah. it's yeah. – you, you can but make arguments all day. I'd probably go Bailey Smith at the moment. Well, because <laughs> I'm big on, like – for me personally – I'd, I'm more looking at it from a height point. Like, if they sign Bailey Smith on a five-year deal or Max Holmes on a five-year deal, I think it's going to bring more hype if they sign a Bailey Smith on a five-year deal. That mm. makes sense. Oh, like, it definitely will. It brings yeah. the club. Is it how, it yeah, excites what, how the supporters. It, like, I think that's really important. Mm. I'd love to put a figure on what, like, Bailey Smith's contract. Like, obviously, we're getting very technical, but, like, the ASA with the additional services mm. yeah. that a player can be paid on top of the cap... With for, cotton on, because he's already a cotton on ambassador, isn't he? So yeah. it's like, yeah. yeah. But like, what extra figure does Bailey Smith command because of you know how marketable he is? Mm. Yeah, mm. and then we've been, I'm, I don't know whether this is true, but Geelong are very good at um, making sure that everyone they get more good players and manage that with uh, outside um, income, I suppose. But yeah. they've only got one point two to play with anyway in their ASAs, haven't they? So yeah. Um, Interesting how that'll all carve up. So interesting. You've got some big dogs down there. Oh, They're taking a little <laughs> slice of that pie. Bloody oh, <laughs> no, it's exciting. Who else is on it this year? We'll get to more throughout the season. Yeah. I reckon this year's going to be huge because clubs the last few years since COVID have just been shuffling money and yeah. haven't been as proactive and creative when it comes to chasing players. I think now with the CBA going up, it means that like all of a sudden everyone's just got extra cash to play with. Yeah. A lot of clubs put the you know uplifts in their contracts. So if, if you've been on a mill you know, and the CBA goes up, a lot of players get the 30%, but some don't. So uh, there'll be some clubs out there like a Hawthorne with, with big money to splash. Love it. I love this. Could talk about it all day, but I know we're going to move on to the footy this week. Lastly, not even, I know that it's a, a bit of an opinion at the moment, maybe if you, unless you guys have an opinion on it. Trading coaches. Did you hear about, mm. I, I don't know if Kane Corns or some, Hutchie. Hutchie was talking about this week. Yeah. I'm all for it. I Trading reckon, a coach? Yeah. So you look at sort of what happened this year with Dimmer, Dimmer yeah. leaving. It's like, well, you know what? If there's things there, I think they do it in the NBA and the EPL or something. They were saying NFL as well. Must have caught just the end of it, but um, yeah. around coaches, yeah, yeah right. like trading coaches. I've never really thought about it. Mm. 
Yeah. When you look at like, you know, when Andrew Dillon came on and said Brad Scott or, or Chris Scott, yeah. it's like, well, Straight down in three years' time, trade him to Tassie, get a bit of money for it. The club can make money and they get a new coach as well. Like, who knows? Because coaching contracts that we've <clears> seen <throat> over time have, haven't really been worth all that much. Yep. You know, like, so Brett Ratton signed a two year deal at the they Saints. Get rid of it. Again, yeah. there wasn't demand for Brett Ratton elsewhere. Yeah. But he only got paid six months of that two years. Wow. Because of the, you know. That's a new coaches New um, coaches agreement where agreement, yeah. um, clubs that are. I guess subsidised by the AFL or on the, you know, one one of a better term, AFL drip feed. Yeah. You know, whereas like a Collingwood would would most likely have to pay the full, full whack whack full of Craig yeah. Interesting. Um, so it does give different protections to different areas of the of the league. But yeah, I, I could see that coming in eventually. Like, you know, the the dimmer one, everyone would love to know, and I don't think we'll ever really know is <laughs> did that was that agreement in place? Yeah. Hmm. Wink wink nudge nudge with Gold Coast before he left Richmond. You know. You're the best in the biz. Mitchy, so you yeah, get after yeah. it, mate, and mm. find out, and You'd then come on to Footy and Friends and let us know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a place to drop it. Hey, bloody hell, round zero. More like round bloody hero. That was fantastic. Am I right? Really? I oh, loved it. You, a couple of messages that come through from you were, God, oh, this is boring. No, what no, okay. news I, will say, I will say, far out. I, would Sydney, I was about to send a letter. I was about to send a letter to Brisbane and uh, Sydney saying, fire up, because this isn't a good start to the year. Mm. Boring as batshit, that game, but I will tell you what. Melbourne the best and player in the comp this year. Was that Melbourne and Sydney? Melbourne and Sydney. What did yeah. I say? Brisbane, Brisbane and Sydney. Yeah, well, they whatever. didn't play each other. No, we'll, I'll, That's get to okay. Bri- I'll get to Brisbane in a minute because yeah. I'm a fucking prophet. <laughs> Nick Blakey <laughs> is the best player in the AFL in 2024. In New South Wales or just the AFL? I reckon he'll be the most improved player in the AFL in 2024. He was pretty good last year. He will go again. He'll be better again. He, he, uh, His kicking is as good as there is, I think, in the competition. He stole the words out of my mouth. Oh, did I? Yeah. He's he, got the best nickname. The Liz, yeah, mm. very good. So I'm, I'm a massive fan of him. But besides that, that game was snooze really fest. shit. Yeah, you know, I was at the NBL on Thursday night. Speaking I, of snooze fest, I took. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's actually when Mitch oh, is talking about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I took a photo and sent it to you. Yeah, true. It was saying how the Giants have gone down that DJs and music. Not not so much during game, but the NBL do it really well, and the place was pumping. Um, it's a little bit T20 esque sort of though of yeah. um, of what sport has been I think with the cricket and whatever else. I don't think footy needs to go there because we got the people with the buy in, yeah. but it was bloody impressive. Maybe the AFL nines get the DJ. Maybe, down maybe there. we could get them down to <laughs> yeah, the East seven, Melbourne Knights maybe little ground. And, so get the DJ. Maybe uh, the seven hundred you know, is not Sparks a thing. down there. Oh yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> get a few more people down there. <laughs> uh, Blues versus Lions far out. I. I fell asleep at halftime of this game because I was just off it. Um, I will make a public apology to Who? Darcy Cottrell. Yep. And what jokes, about the other guy? Jokes, jokes. Took a good hanger. Matt Cottrell. What about the other guy? Matt Carroll. Carroll. Yes. Now, a bit of confusion on my front. I must have seen an article, Matt Carroll had changed the number to 32. I thought Darcy... He hadn't Matt changed. Cottrell He'd been had, given that number because he, he just got drafted. Okay. Well, that had happened. <laughs> and then I thought Matt Cottrell had gone to the 32. Bit of a blunder. Oh, yeah. Put something up on the weekend. Because you thinking, really took it out on Sam Walsh during that episode. Well, yeah, I wasn't... I, I thought he was wrong, but he was actually yeah. right. Long story short, it's a bit of a shit story, but he, just to break it here, he is remaining in the 46, uh, Matt Cottrell. Mm. He's actually... And then he goes, he's actually one of my favourite players. He's no, he's not. You don't even players. know his name, you He's dickhead. one of my favourite players. Um... <laughs> Jack, Ca- Jack Carroll, speaking of Carroll's and throwing in confusion, he was a super sub on the weekend. Yeah, he probably well. changed came came around the Yeah, the got his hands on the footy. Board. I know you were asleep on the couch, but... I he heard was, it. I yeah. heard that. Yeah. I saw a bit of a Instagram sort of tile. Well, you would have got a fair bit of well. feedback on Instagram. I did. I Which did. I had good. to turn it off for a couple of days. Um, anything else in the Brisbane? Oh, oh, obviously, Are they and, slipping? Are they, are they actually missing the, well, the final still? So, or? Mitch, just I know that you listen to the show and you're a fan, but I had Brisbane... Out of the eight, not looking good for them. <laughs> they lost the first game at home. I had Matt Rao to be on the resurrection this year and be the second best, most improved player behind Nick Blakey. He had 20 clearances. Gold Coast won. And I think that's about it. But it was pretty spot on to where I'm heading. Dimmer's teams season. never win clearances and Matt Rao went and had 20 of them. 20. Yeah. 20 yeah. clearances. Dimmer, Dimmer likes to play the turnover game more so than the clearance game. But Turnover game? Well, he, he could have been coaching Richmond's back line still. Jesus Christ. They might give the hands this week. Like. Richmond's back line. <laughs> they need to learn how to just handball out of D50. Yeah. Just give the hands. Just yeah. handball chains out of D50. That was woeful. That, mate, I love that give the hands. Oh, yeah, that's great. I'm <laughs> <Yeah>. going. <laughs> who, who gives the hands this week? 
Mm. Well, we'll, I'll go we'll back go over through the we'll, we'll go through, through, through them. Yeah, we'll, we'll get through them. Um, Giants, Collingwood, touching on that. Brent Daniels. I've been hyping this like up for years. So good to see him play extremely well. Has he, to be the happiest grumpy man you've ever met in your life. And he gave Mason Cox a whack on the Oh, weekend. that was fantastic, wasn't it? He's such a he's such a feisty young man. He's very good. What did you make of the Mason Cox tactics and what he did? I feel now so, that I've seen the other vision, I kind of feel a like I feel sorry for him. I, I was like, oh god, it's unlike Shane to be the one that's getting bullied here. Mm. It was Shane that was bullying Mason. Yeah. At, like at the end of the day, They've, if you haven't seen it, Mason's getting his last tap. Shane and that are like, nah, piss off. We're in now. He tried to finish off. Cal Ward's actually laughing in the vision as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Unlike Chook. Chook, you see Chook, um, Josh Kelly? No. Nah, he just shoot himself head down straight away, avoiding all... Yeah. Avoiding all yeah, uh, Mr. Nice Guy. Yeah, he's like, oh, no, no, no. No, don't, don't say anything controversial. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I felt sorry for Mason. Yeah, I think uh, the Mason hype around the game probably added an extra layer to that whole conversation. Now, the petting zoo was cool. Yeah. yeah, I loved it. I have never called out another team like he has. But I'll tell you what, I have been touchless to half time and that doesn't feel good. <laughs> let alone building the hype Take around the game. Take his mindset. Mate, it's, I'll tell you what, I don't know how long half time goes for, but it feels like it goes for about four hours. Was he hours. touchless to half time? Touchless yeah. to half time. Was he? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. I didn't know that. Uh, mate, <laughs> mate, it's a long half time yeah. avoiding all eye contact. You're like, geez, you... I've been running around now for 60 minutes and I haven't sniffed this thing. Where's how the first one How many times we was almost like almost there as well? We just couldn't get the hands on it. C- could you imagine Simo then, like his first three games, three duck eggs, um, Cade Simpson. Yeah. Thought, like... But he was on. it was like on the game for like 10 minutes. Well, that's mate, he was yeah, playing oh, sorry, yeah. Back like How many blokes of the... in the room would know that? So like of his 21 teammates, how many other guys <laughs> in the room would know he didn't have a kick? Nah. I don't think you don't really know. Yeah, because he's because still... he's touching it here. You yeah. wouldn't you'd know. You still that feel he... like you're somewhat near it. Yeah. Um... <laughs> but yeah, fuck. It's, I've it's had a lonely a, yeah, place. The first quarter, I've come in and been like, oh Christ, I don't think I've touched one here. Uh, no, I've I've had a halftime break with no <laughs> yeah. no, no stats. And... Dill, we need more from you. Yeah, yeah no like, shit. Oh, mate, your pressure's good. Yeah. Well, uh, it's got to be. <laughs> um, Callum Brown. What do you remember of him when we first when we were at the Giants and where he's come to now? Kicking five yeah. in five yeah. and four. Five on the weekend, and one from like sixty, mind yeah. you, just knocked it through. Uh, mate, I remember my most like the memory that comes to mind is my last ever training session, and I'm talking it up like I thought I was quick. Mm. Um, Aiden Bonner, Cal Brown, they both in like I thought, yeah, you're quick, but I've still got you. I'm not, I'm 32, but please, I used to beat you. Like, what? Shut up. Um, <laughs> anyway, well, we're having a race in our warm ups. I said, right, boys, let's go. I was better than you over ten, just to put yeah. it. Like. <laughs> Get the vision. Let me finish the story. Sorry, you? sorry. You're getting in the way. Um, and so I said, right, let's let's go. We're going to have a flat out race. I'm, I've pinned it. I'm thinking I'm going to win this. Kel Brown runs in front of me, turns around and starts going, Roto, old boy. Back in his yeah. Irish accent, going backwards. That's how quick he was. He's, 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 he's an in, unbelievable impressive. athlete. Impressive. That story's not that great, but um, yeah. thanks for interrupting. No. <laughs> um, anyway, that's anyway, what we got to on that. Uh, that's my memories of Kel Brown. Good. Shout out, Kel Brown. Anything else? Oh, did you guys talk about this tonight about Jesse Hogan? No, but I said of the because he's still out of contract. Out of contract, and I don't know what the minimum contracts would be at the moment. But I'm assuming it was re-signed once since he's been at the Giants. Re-signed it, once. He's since signing that he's been better again. Yeah. So obviously, when he left Fremantle, would have been minimum chips. Yeah. One year deal, another one year deal. Re-sign now. Mm. For a player, you know, it's one game in, but looking really good. He. You know, we forget that he was a 17-year-old pick. He could be anything, oh. really, if he gets back to where he was. Speaking of key forwards, and mm. he's probably on, I don't know what the money would be. It might be 200, might be 250, Plus not sure. Yeah, But it could be nearly the output of a million-dollar forward this year. His final series last year was great, and yeah. he's continued on mm. with that. I interviewed him pre-game, and he just said, the one thing is the confidence in my body, and he's got that now. Yeah, yeah. so Makes such a difference. Yeah. He does look fitter, though. Yeah. You know, he just looks... Yeah, he looks Fit? lean. It yeah. looks like he's enjoying him. He's the well, we know what the anonymity is like up yeah. there in um in Sydney. It looks like he's enjoying being out of the spotlight and just being able to be Jesse Hogan and not um the footballer that he was at the D's and then over in Frio, obviously mm. a uh, two team town, mate. It's, it's huge for him, which yeah. is great. But um yeah, he's going really well. That four line's pretty exciting. Yeah, Cal Brown, Cadman took a couple of contested marks. Brown, Cadman, Hogan, Daniels. Toby, yeah, Toby, Toby Bedford, yeah, and then hopefully Darcy Jones, yeah, Brent Daniels, yeah, like, yeah, it's it's an impressive team. I, I, 
the funny thing is, I, I feel like this year coming in, everyone's like, oh, they're not in form. It's like, you don't really want to be in form. It's not even at round one. It's fucking round zero at the moment. So mm. you don't want to be peaking at round zero. Mm. But you just look playing good footy. They, they did look, look good. Yeah. And their really back good. line as well. Like, we could talk about the Giants. Oh, underrated. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Don't get us started on the, yeah. the Giants' back line. Yeah. 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 Sammy yeah. Taylor, star. Connor Iden, big seeker. Jack star. Buckley. Jack Buckley. Witter's down there. Witter's star. Yeah. A few stars. Anyway, so round zero tick. Did you like it? I did. Yeah. Because you've created four extra blockbusters on a weekend when you, I know all everyone's saying, oh, the Vegas thing happened and everyone's back in Sydney. Yeah, but you still got four games being back into Melbourne and the AFL says, let's see how this weekend plays out. Yes, but they get, the ticket sales are already up for round one because people on their couch are jealous back in Melbourne. I would have loved to have seen one game on the Sunday at the G maybe. Oh, yes, yeah. it was like 38 degrees. Oof, yeah. But like imagine Hawthorne Essendon on Sunday at the G yeah. after the start of the season up north. Yeah, I'm pumped as to see footy back in Melbourne now. Mm. It's going to be so cool this weekend, obviously. Getting back to Carlton. Uh, let's get into it now. Carlton, Are you Richmond. going Thursday night? No, I'm, I'm, I'm not. going along. I'm going to Perth. I'm going to Perth. Actually, I'm going to Perth on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Do right. a live show over there. Big in Perth. You, well, that's to be determined. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, are you going on I'm Thursday? going on Thursday, yeah. yeah. I'm uh, I'm actually in the committee room. Wow. Uh, which is really nice. Of Mr. Fox. Um, and I'm bringing my old man. So we have never been to an AFL game together and just sat there and watched. So, oh, mate, fantastic. I'm... Um, yeah, Maybe I should come because like... Well, you're with, not my dad, so no, you won't well, be coming. I, I and have been Jimmy's your dad. Not on, I've been yet. your dad before. Maybe Jimmy will bring you. You were calling me daddy Maybe a couple Jimmy times. Maybe Jimmy might actually. bring you. <laughs> you were calling me daddy a couple of times out there. <laughs> Same venue. When? On the G. On the G. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> mate. Yeah. You that used to ship call has me sailed daddy. It and everyone knows <laughs> it. It is to call me papa. <laughs> anyway, Mitch. Um, <laughs> you're a clown. Who wins? Carlton Smackham. In that game. Come yeah. smack them. Yeah. See you, Tigers. Back yeah. to Punt Road. Yeah. Tell you what, fuck I do out. get Nank, Dusty, and Lynch back. Yeah. So which will make a completely different ball game, but and the Blues I, have yeah. got no Doc, Walsh, Wetering, but I think Carlton's will win. Yeah. 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 Geez, I, I can see that if they yeah. didn't. For but it's good for the season if they don't. Mm. You know, it keeps everyone feeling like, oh, maybe I'm not too sure now. I don't know which yeah. way to go, but I think Carlton should be too good. How's Uze going? from your reports uh, everyone loves him and they've places refresh I think their list is just in a fascinating position for me yeah. because it's so much money tied up in the top end and that sort of 28 plus age bracket on their list yep. now, they're 22 and under has got a lot you know leaves a lot to be desired because they just haven't had the picks and the top end you know, they gave a lot for Hopper and Torano who weren't free agents they went and got them for trades mm. so they went and had to you know pay the farm for those guys yeah um, Sell the, sell the farm, that's the right way to say mm. it. Pay the farm, I yeah. like it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I, I think it's really interesting, and this is not from this is not verbatim, but with Hopper and Trainer, you'd, you'd have to be a bit flat with, I don't know if they are, but you'd have to be a little bit flat with what's happened with Dylan on the line. leaving. Oh, Ring him. Not sure. But <laughs> what's really interesting, and we're speaking about this, not to put you on the spot, but what was your mate's name that went to West Coast? My mate's name who went to West Coast? From Richmond, the list manager. Oh, Matty Clark. Matty Clark. Now, yeah. who takes responsibility for where Richmond are at at the moment like they've obviously come off well list manager yeah so like but also like Dimmer would have been heavily involved yeah, heavily involved yeah so he, Dimmer, Gale Dimmer knows the player that he wants to play in his side yeah. and he builds the game they, is, have they oversight where they were at or uh, maybe but but you, you got to think though last week or last week last year if they were if they have Tom Lynch up forward yeah. um, playing it's consistently, game. it's yeah. a completely different look into the... You start to get some wins. They lost a lot of games, by not that much last year, or especially early. Yeah. Mate, things change with Gibkes Coppins. is a top 10 pick as yeah. a key back. Yeah, I think I, I still look at Collingwood last year and like Pendlebury side bottom, those older guys and what they were able to do and help win a flag. You know, Richmond, if they got a bit of rise from their middle tier guys, you couldn't see them being that far away with the same yeah. list build. Mm. But they... Yeah, no, they need point. Tom Lynch to play, and then they need another key Lynch forward, changes I think. a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Friday night pies. So we go on Blues. Yep, yeah. Friday night pies, Swans, MCG. Whoa, it's a big Jeez, one. Jeez, I like the wow. Swans after the weekend. Imagine like, Collingwood zipping too. Mm. After a wouldn't game. wouldn't be the first time, but um, yeah, it's that's an interesting game. That one isn't it? Um, I don't know. You have to back the pies to bounce back, wouldn't you? Pies on the rebound. They should get Jeremy Howe back. Who makes a big difference? Like yeah. they looked a bit shaky behind the ball without <clears throat> yeah. Murphy and Howe. Yeah, young bloke playing his first game. Mate, the the Giants were ready to oh prime to pound. So like, no um, no qualms about that. But 
yeah, I think the Pies have to bounce back. But geez, I was impressed by the Swans as well. Like yeah, to, that'd be a good game. Yeah, that game was really wet too. I reckon, or well, not wet, but sl- slippery up there at the SCG. Bit different when you're playing down here. Hopefully, it's a nice dry day, which I think it will be. Yeah, I'll go Pies as well. Essendon and Hawks MCG Saturday. Oh. Flip of the coin. This like they've both had their injury concerns. Parrish has been ruled out. Has he? Yeah. What with Hammy? All right. Okay, is that in the last game or in training? Yeah, did it in training last week. Hammy right. scare me. Reoccurring hammy injuries. Mm. And the hard Hawks, to shake. Hawks yeah. got a heap of injuries as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fuck, be the the Dons yeah. would want to win, put it that way. I think yeah. that's more the, the case. Dogs, are they I, playing? Pardon? The is Dons, it? I see. Oh, the Dons. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Your ears going on here as well. Sorry, I still used the Dogs. I was like, I, I might be on the wrong game. Yeah. Dons. Dons got to win. I think they have to win. Yeah. Dons will win the first five to six and then... Skid himself a bit, I think, unfortunately. Shit himself to bed. Yeah. <laughs> unfortunately slash fortunately. Uh, yeah, I think they'll win. Um, Giants North. Giants. Giants. Comfortably. Yeah. Where is that? NG Stadium. Oh, is yeah, that no, Tassie? No, no, that's the Giants home deck now. It's not Giants Stadium it's not, anymore. It's not Spotless. I like it, Spotless. It was Giants Stadium when we were there too. When was Spotless? Was that like 2016? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tom Scully and... I liked, I liked Spotless. Israel Folau were there. Yeah, I like Spotless. Skoda Stadium at one point? I like Skoda. Yeah. I still call it Telstra though. <laughs> what a good... Well, I know what you're talking about. So yeah. Know. Um, what do you expect from North in this game though? Uh, well, from what I watched them, when they, I went and watched them play Collingwood in that, like one of the Mickey Mouse trial yeah. games. They look like they were going to take the game on and really try and energise the footy, get it going. When I say energise, I mean quick hands get the ball moving bit of Richmond out the back line sort of yeah a bit of bounce mm. uh, well they've got good players in there She's or McKercher mm. um, you know who they are, they are those two boys. I do know them yeah yeah good young players well, they're, they're ball users and that's who we need we need uh, Chom and Corey and those boys giving the hands to those sort of guys Give out the of the back line yeah because yeah. Corey they wasn't happy he Mick oh, really? Barlow uh Told him at training, he told a few of the North boys, and we'd be telling them to give the hands. Yeah. And they, I got a couple of messages this week. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> That's brilliant. I said, just give the answer. Yeah. Well, I, mate, when you got those two jets down there, your job's done. Mark yeah. it, give it off. North um, started last year pretty hot. Yeah, zip and two. Oh, sorry, two and zip. Um, and then, yeah, things went downhill from there. Um, but I, I really like young Tommy Powell playing through the midfield as well. Young Charlie Lazaro, I'm hoping he can, you know, take his game to another level. And that just. Gives um, you know Curtis and uh, Larky and Big Bull a chance up forward, you know, because mm. you've got three good targets down there. But Larky's in it. How, he signed a long term deal, didn't he? He did. Yeah. yeah okay. He's just thinking. There was cut, like, yeah. in the same breath as Jamara. They were coming for him. Yeah, I can imagine. He he kicks like, goals, mate. He kicked he seventy does. last year. Yeah, he kicks good goals. Cats Saints GMHBA. Oh, down there. I think I'd have to tip the Cats. Yeah. But. The Saints just they they stay in the game because of Ross's defensive game style or game plan that he's able to just smother teams and then they seem to be playing with a little bit more freedom too though. Would you agree with that? There's our Wanganee Miller are yeah I like halfback. him yeah, yeah. they're halfbacks um, you know Stockers there they'll Sinclair's fifty fifty okay. I think yeah well he's a big difference for them if yeah. he's not playing their midfield for me is where they need a little bit more speed and energy Saints. For the Saints, yeah, yeah, and the, like the Cats, probably just their depth overall in terms of who goes through there. And um, Holmes can light it up. Being at half back, Guthrie's a big out for them. Mm. Mitchy Duncan's at half back now, uh, one of our boys. Mm. Um, but they've got two big jets up front that'll that'll help. So hopefully our boy Connor O'Sullivan can play. That'd be is he debuting? Do we know? No. I'm sure he. We, I, I haven't heard. We don't. I don't do you reckon know. he's around or is he? He'll be within the mix, but yeah. I don't think he'd be. I don't know yet. I said last week as well. He's the only player I'd give a ten-year deal. I'd I'd buy equity into him Connor as Sullivan. a player. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Riley Sanders is going to be a pretty good player for the Bulldogs, I reckon. He'd be a good player, but I think like as much as I bag the big boys, I yeah. don't like. I wouldn't invest in a ruckman, but yeah. he's a he's a. <laughs> well, they're not even a part of the team. You know, it's a different fucking sport. Yeah, uh, but I would invest in Connor O'Sullivan. Yeah, with about all the with money the I have, take it to the bank isn't much. Um, more importantly with St Gilda though did you see Ross Lyon on the weekend talking about uh, Tommy, Shares? Tommy Sheridan yeah, yeah. Horse yeah. <laughs> it's just he speaks the truth doesn't he well, like, we're all thinking it yeah oh poor old Tommy Shares he's had to relive that drop mark and uh, what do you reckon would have burnt him more the drop mark or Ross saying that he wouldn't Buckley's be anywhere major. without me <laughs> Oh, yeah, probably the DB one, I reckon. Yeah, very um, good. If you didn't see how that was on uh, on 7, don't worry, I'll send the link out. Very funny. Very funny stuff. Sons and the Crows. Now, this reminds me of Nathan Bock. Oh, does it? Yes. Yeah. 
Number 44, Big and he Bocky. went across. Great trade, that was. Yeah. Um, he actually played some good footy at Gold Coast. Bocky. Mm. Bocky boy. People said he should have been captain over Gary Ablett. Really? Hmm. He There's was a... He was a, he was a yeah, no. We, we like to think what's on the top of our head here, mate. Don't apologise yeah. for that. We like Bock. I don't know what he's up to these days, but he did look like the quintessential surfy sort of dude, didn't he? With the tips and the hair. Mm-hmm. and sure. You're not thinking of Trent, Trent Henschel, are you? No. No, I remember Bock. Yeah, yeah, he was a big 44. What was his first back. Name? Nathan. Nathan, yeah. yeah. Where's this game being played? People First Stadium. Where the hell is that? Name, <laughs> named after our values here. <laughs> Audience Where's People First, first Stadium? They've renamed it. Metricon, which has been re- renamed to Heritage Bank, which yeah. has been renamed again this year. Oh, you're kidding. People, people First. People yeah. First. What is that? Is it a... It's a bank, isn't it? People's, mm. People's Choice. And we people love first. that bank. And if they want to sponsor us, <laughs> we would love that too. Yeah. It's a great name for a bank. Yeah, right. Um... Oh, jeez, I'd have to back the Suns off there. Yeah. Their first one. Oh, so they've got two home games. Yep. Are you Sora coming off your first game or will you be, like, will you be better? Or, like, who's got the advantage coming into this? The Suns, they've given they've played or will they be sore? I think you're better equipped for the match intensity because you've played. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's always that thing as well. Like, you know, coming off the bye, that team always gets a bit sleepy. Mm. So who knows? Yeah, you're, I think it's actually a bit of an advantage of playing in the first week. Because there's a few we'll games... Find out. Like the Giants North. Like there's so many games this weekend where one team yeah, has right. played where one hasn't. I was thinking that. I was actually thinking maybe the rounds this week would be mixed in the four, like mm. the four games. So you'd play teams that also played in round yeah. one just to give it a bit more of a... Yeah. I remember Remember back in 2014, you won't remember this, but we played Gold Coast round one because I don't know why they changed it because of the... It might have been Commonwealth Is that when Carmichael kicked the winning goal? Uh, no. Gaz had like 40. Uh, it was at actually at the old Metricon, whatever yeah. it was. But then we played you guys round two and Wallopjes, I reckon. Um, I had, That was a rising star, that game. I'm not joking. In 2014? 2014. 2015, round, round I reckon two. it was actually. 20, no, no, it was, it was 2015 because Port... Anyway, who gives a fuck? Uh, <laughs> just listen to my story and just... Yeah, sorry. So what I was trying to say yeah. is that second up... Because we played, because usually it was a big build up, Carlton Richmond. That's what you're ready yeah. for. You got to go. And and that's no doubt Richmond, Gold Coast, Dimmer, all that sort of hype. It would have been built up a lot. Um, Richmond will probably be a lot better for it this week, too. But mm. let's see. Let's see what happens. Sunday, D's Dogs. Oh, D's to bounce. Is that the G, too? I think, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Yep. D's. They get Cozzy back. Cozzy yeah, he's a good player, Cozzy Pickett. Mm, I like Cozzy. Port West Coast. Jeez, it sounds a bit boring already. Adelaide Oval. <laughs> Sorry. Port by. I love Port. Eighty-five points. I'm a big. Port. I'm a big pair guy this year. Yep. Love of Cannon. Where did you have him in your ladder? Do you remember? I had him. I think fourth. Okay. I think I had him fourth. So I'm yeah. a big pair guy. I'm not sure how many more years they've got. Yeah. What do you mean? I think oh. like we feel that every year with Port, but like Rosie, you know, Captain Butters, like. Yeah, can, those they're, they're two of the best young players in the game. Horn Francis, Horn Francis on his march. Yeah, yeah. Front end, Charlie Dixon's he playing? Yep. Hit. I don't actually know. Yeah, but like Ollie Lord, <coughs> um, yeah. Marshall, George Yardies will be back soon. Yeah, and they've got those key backs that they've just traded in. So yeah, mate, they'll yeah. be thereabouts. Rip I think they're Rock, Yeah, big yeah. big Soldo. He'll eat two Zerk pizzas Thatcher, after the game. Boys. Yeah, big Zerk. He's there. Third tall now. Mm. Yep. Yeah, be good. Uh, and last but not least, you wouldn't guess 440 at, uh, in Perth, Freo Brisbane. Are you going? No. <laughs> I'll be there, but I <laughs> The, the Lions didn't ask you to come along? Oh, I won't be going to that one. No. Um, oh, Lions will win that. Yeah. I'll it's go. just a weird thing, right? I've always... I, when I'm awake at night, I sometimes sit in bed and I think, what's the weirdest combo of a game you've never thought about? And at what oval? <laughs> so, like... I've never, always, I've never thought that. Do you know what I mean? Like you think about it, you go, "What's it like?" This question to the audience too. Frio Port, uh, sorry, Frio Brizzy at Optus on a Sunday four forty game. Bit weird. Never really thought about it. Four forty would happen yeah. once every two years at minimum. But I know, but I'd never really think about it. Like mm. even is it, it's not prime even, time enough to be Saturday night though, like, and that's no, probably the only other. time But even they play like it. a game like I don't know, like Frio. 
Frio, Bri- well, that's actually that's the game. <laughs> Frio, like you go Frio Gold Coast at Gold Coast. Like, you just don't question. think about it. Mm. No, don't it's an interesting. Audience, it's don't interesting, answer this. Darcy. No, it's agree? a shit question. Agree, Darcy's agree. Darcy, don't it. put that up. Hey, um, before we finish as well, Darcy and I went to a concert last night. Not together, but we ran into each other. Oh, Jose Gonzalez. Oh, is he good? Heartbeats. You know, heartbeats. No, sing it. That's not him. That's Men at Work. Sort of like that, but different lyrics. Yeah, it's a good song. Hey, did you want my Perler of the Week? Perler of the Week. We've had a little, fucking time. We've had a request from uh, someone. Yeah, who was it? It wasn't from that jerk who hit us up uh, oh, on no, socials no, who no, we've both no, had. We've, we've had to block that we've young had man. To block that flog. Yeah. Advi Suresh says, Dill's ladder prediction is going to be bang on. Thank you. We spoke about that earlier. Uh, Hugo Walter Leverett said, Ask Brett about his tennis game last week. Were um, you playing tennis last week? No. Nah. Okay, there you go, Hugo. He wasn't playing. No. Uh, Kerbin says, when's Nick Butler coming back on? Saw Butts last night down at AFL Nights. He took a couple of videos of you, which yeah. we will post. And So he stopped videoing himself, Nick Butler. He said he ran out of battery. He's, he's not well. Yeah. He's not well, that guy. He had half a percent left uh, to just but, take a little snippet of me. Sorry, Advi Suresh again said, can we have Brettel's Perler of the Week segment? And we cannot deny the audience on what they want. So, Brett, who's your Perler of the Week? Well, I've got a nom first, and yeah. you get the first nom okay. for your Perler in Darcy <laughs> Cottrell. Um yeah, do your research, mate. And actually, don't do your research. It's fun for me and Mick and uh, Mitchie to uh, to take the piss out of you. But um, that he- was it. I know people might think that's like that was a gag. That was a genuine, <laughs> just oversight. And I, one of those ones where you'd sort of do something, just put the phone down, and you don't check it for like fifteen minutes. And when I got back, like the amount of people I had messaging me about it was quite embarrassing because I do love the Cottrells. I love what they're about. <laughs> I met them up at the Gabba last year. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, nice. And you forgot his name. You backed over it. No, I told you what I went it? to school with a kid named Darcy Cottrell oh, years ago. Yeah. So. Yeah, nice. Anyway, and your second one? Uh, that's just the nom. Uh, that's just, just a nom. A nomination. Oh, that's a nom. Okay. Yeah, but my actual Perler of the Week. Yep. Uh, this guy's come back for his first game back after 18 months out of the game. We both have played with this fella, Zachy Williams, up at the Giants. Yeah. Uh, calf slash tendon injury late in the, the year, 18 months ago. Comes back, just flying um, up at Marucci door, just goes to cut, innocuous ACL, out mm. for 12 months. But in that 12 months, as he's recovering, loses his sister to cancer as mm. well. So been through a shitload, but then comes out, fitted in, hand in glove, back on the weekend. They got the win. Um, just wanted to give a little shout out no, to, a good, uh, a very to Zachy Williams. Warranted shout out. We love Zachy. He's our pearl of the week and a Max Sports client. Would you oh believe? well, we love that even more. How's um, how's Hugh Bond going up there? Bondy yeah. going really well. Fantastic. Yeah, he's That's a good. chance to um to play in the first I hope few he does. weeks maybe. Um, at the Crows. He's at the Crows. He's yeah. At the Crows. Number forty. Um, Dill did play. Surprise, surprise. Play surprise this Dill year. didn't know who the fuck he was. But Breakout um, play this year. Key forward. No, nah, oh. he's a midfielder. Damn. Slash. They need to keep forward. With the they do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lastly, just on Zach um, Williams, I remember that game. He came back after his first Achilles and played one practice match in the Neefel. Came in and played the Giants Swans final to get him into the grand I final. With, I was coming back that same game and so yeah. did Tobes. Yeah. And so did Matty DeBoer. And I was playing in that too. Did you play in that the final? Neifel? No, no. I, I didn't get the game in the seniors. I was oh. playing in the Neefel before the week yes. before with Zach Williams at Blacktown. And... Um, he came in off literally no prep, one half of a game into a final and played one of the best games I've ever seen someone play. Like, it was... That was still one of the funnest games I've been a part of, too, because yeah. we just... The Swans game? Yeah, Swans qualifying elimination Did final. you injure yourself in that game? No. That was the next year against the Dogs. That was the next year. Yeah. My memories get blurred. Yeah. Anyway, hey, Mitchell, great to um have you in, mate. Appreciate it. Tradies, Thanks make sure you check board. out the pod. When's it out? Wednesday morning. Wednesday morning. Fantastic. Get on that and um, and follow the boys along. Subscribe to the podcast on Apple, Spotify, and wherever else you're listening to your podcast this year. Brettles, always a pleasure, never a chore. Good yeah, to that's see you, my boy. Mate, and hopefully it. we get Mickey B back next week and we can... Uh, next week you're... Oh, actually, next week I'm in WA. We're getting yeah. on um, Josh Gallup and the crew over there. I'm trying to reach out to a few WA superstars. Who would you get on the podcast if you're in WA? Paul Hazelby's got some stories. Paul Hazelby? Okay. Yeah. Cuzzy? He's in... I think he's on Dancing with the Stars these days. Mm. In Sydney, I think. Anyway, I'll, friend. I'll work uh, it out. And then two uh, two weeks away, and then I've got my special guest hopefully coming oh in. Oh, my God. I'm so nervous about this. So we've got a rule coming on now. We flipped the pan. Did you hear this? I did. And Liz is going to up by bring them in. Yours was on the phone. So, no, no. I haven't even had one yet. Oh, that was me. So, yeah. So I'm going to... 
we flip the coin, uh, flip the pen, Lids is up first. He's bringing a guest in that me and Mick don't know who it is. DP knows who it is, but... I'm really excited. And, and you don't know them either. Like, Have they played league footy? They played league footy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> who is it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> All right, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. I'll see you next week. Yeah. All right.